of the day if that's okay grand Our, hack is that what you said yeah yeah or actually andrew tate and pat mcafee it's, it's a team effort and i'm going to name four and a number of people and they're all going to be they're going to tie for genius of the day it's like activism ufo disclosure time but how are you doing i'm doing great are we considering this? Are we uh, considering this part of the show yet, or are we? Uh, oh, back? you want to play some music, and I'll do the reading. Yeah, let me see. I'm gonna play it from my phone. It's not gonna sound as great, but it's. Uh, I don't know. Or unless you want me to try to. Th- oh, if I share a screen, I can play. Uh, I'll just play it from my phone. I'll start like ten seconds in. Into the music. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to my virtual avatar. I'm less self-conscious, if that's okay. No worries. See, now I look all cheerful. All right. (laughs) I just skipped around. Are you not hearing anything? Not a thing? Oh, well, then I'm definitely going to play it from a shared. I couldn't tell if you could. I thought you were. My microphone, I guess, just was not picking it up. Okay. I can solve this problem. One more. (laughs) And I'm going to share a screen. Share with audio. Running after the knowledge. You gotta get somehow. I think you got to slow down before you start. Welcome to Beyond Humanity, brought to you by HiveOne.net. With us today is Matt Reddy, host of the Mindful Activist Podcast, published author of Revolutionary Mindfulness and Hospital Commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. He's an amateur ufologist, creator of HiveOne.net, and a philosopher. I'm Margaret Anager of New Perspective. In Beyond Humanity podcast, we explore the possibilities and implications of artificial intelligence and alien life for human evolution, identity, and destiny. We want to invite anyone on Earth, human, alien, reptilian, AI, interdimensional beings, and met fans. We're sponsored by the Sisterhood of the Forked Tongue Worm. First off, let's start with Matt telling us about the super genius of the week. Okay, okay. Um, it was going to be, as of a couple hours ago, Satoshi Nakamoto, but it is not. I'm sorry, Satoshi. I guess I, I just went on a walk and I, uh, listened to Andrew Tate, I believe is his name, and Graham Hancock have an interesting discussion on, I believe, the Andrew Tate podcast. I, I think that's who this is, this, this mm-hmm. podcast. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be one of the topics. Let's just say it's, I'm going to have to say it's Graham Hancock and Andrew Tate, but I don't know if we want to go into the full story yet. Let's talk about other stuff and we can come back to it. How's that? That's fine. That's great. Um, I 
All I wanted to really talk about today was that uh, 2024 Intelligent Authorization Act um, that the Senate wants to know more about the things that are in the sky and uh, that they made a law that the top spy boss named uh, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick of Arrow um, has to be able to get a report about everything that the military and other departments have within six months. The report should say, uh, if they can, what the things are that they see, where they come from, what they can do, and how we can deal with them. Uh, the new law says that anyone who works or has worked for the government uh, is obligated to tell the top spy boss, is what I call him, um, Dr. Kirkpatrick. Uh, they have to um, let him know everything that they know. And uh, it shows that the government's taking things seriously and it agrees with, with what the NASA UAP task force recommended. Um, that there are things in the sky that we don't know what they are and we need to study them. Um, so very happy that the Senate um, did that law and hoping that there's action, but six months to find anything out is a long time. Uh, yeah. why, why don't you tell us what you heard from Andrew Tate? Okay. Uh, I just started a Twitter space, and so we're live on okay. Twitter space and recording. Is that cool with you, That Mark? is great. Hello, Twitter. Okay, so we should be getting a decent... Uh, cause that way, cause I think this is, I'm considering this breaking news. It might be our last breaking news story ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about we just play the Andrew Tate Hancock? Um, let me see. We're going to play that. And then we're also going to, dun, dun, dun. oh, we got to find, did you hear something about a solar flare? Solar flare? I saw well, on- we're in a period of, of way greater activity. Um, I do know that, but I haven't heard a particular one about space, about sun weather okay. coming our way. I'm going to share my screen here, if that's cool. Okay. Sharing some. Okay, this is what I got on some Google search. Fears of Internet apocalypse are brewing. How likely is upcoming solar flare? Solar activity ramping up faster. What is the Washington Post is actually covering it. They're not covering aliens, but they're covering a solar flare that they say might be an apocalypse. Are you seeing this screen? Well, there there was a solar flare, uh, you know, pre-1900 that affected, like, telegraph wires and stuff. Um, so the precedent is there. Um, so we'll see. But this, is, this kind of warning comes about once a year. It's not... <laughs> Okay. It'd be interesting to see, you know, if NASA gets on board, then I'll start worrying. <laughs> okay. So, well, well, we are looking at our screen here, right? And mm-hmm. we got the Hill, which is, the, I think that's News Nation, Space.com, CBS News, and the Washington Post. Washington Post has not covered aliens. Solar activity is ramping up. Okay. This is what I saw. Mm-hmm. On there you go. 1859. I, it was before 1900. But I didn't okay. Know exactly Let's, someone is saying this could destroy Earth. There are oh, NASA launched something. something. That's interesting. That uh, a storm. I mean, I, sh- I need to find the tweet that like set me off and it made me be like, um, da, 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 da. or we can just go to the Hancock. All right, no, let me see if I can find the tweet. Let me see. Which, what should I try to do? It was from Klaus, I believe. You know, Klaus. He's a really big. Um, uh, Big UFO guy. Uh, how do you list what you marked as good? Um, solar flare experts. Oh. oh, let me close my door here. Okay. Yeah, the solar flare. Someone said it was, like, going to hit on a specific date. Like, we know the date it's going to hit. Well, we can calculate the, you know, the time, right? 
Ah, this I'm is not... the thing. It's in a matter of months, I think. Um, all right. Well, I'm just going to go to the, the Hancock thing, because if you just, like, listen to this Hancock thing, um, it'll, it'll be much better than uh, talking about it. So it was... Oh, no, it's not Tate, not Andrew Tate, it's Schultz. <laughs> I'm completely, these are not Schultz and Hancock, Antarctica. What could be hidden in Antarctica? Yeah, all right. I, I want to talk about Antarctica. Mm -hmm. all right, is it okay if we just play this and listen to it, or is that? Uh, yeah, let's hear a bit of it. Okay. I could play it at high speed if you wanted to, like, absorb it faster, because they, they talk okay. about a lot. You want, is that okay? It's going to sound yeah. a little weird, but it's, uh. That's fine. We'll go 1.5. Not too unreasonable. Now, it's look how eloquent this guy Schultz is with his questions. I, I want to talk about Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Because I think this is going to be the new obsession. I feel like it's trending super high. Mm -hmm. Who knows if there's any truth to it, but a friend of ours who will remain nameless went there. Yeah. Got to go on a cool experience trip, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And he said a couple interesting things. He said, uh, the mountains looked eerily pointy and four-sided. Mm -hmm. Uh, he said, way more mountainous than he thought it would be. Mm -hmm. I think the illusion made from looking at maps and watching penguins. By the way, you can see flat. mountains. You can see mountains on the Orontius Phineas map. Oh, is that with the little edges? Around the edges are? there. Interesting. Those are mountains. Now, he also said this. He said a couple things. He said, there is a pact with every country that has a slice of it that they will not dig or remove any minerals from Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And he even said that a scientist was there, said to them, World War III will not start until one of these countries breaks that pact. Mm -hmm. They are clearly protecting or preserving something. Mm -hmm. That may or may not be under, I believe it's three miles, Mark was saying earlier, at its thickest of ice. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark, maybe you should describe the thing that you were saying before about there was a time where... Yeah, Antarctica, I was reading an article that perhaps 90 million years ago, there was a lush rainforest that is now covered in miles of ice yeah. on the Antarctic mm -hmm. continent. Yeah, that, that's probably true. If you go, if you go back that far, uh, you would find that um, the Earth's climate was very different from, from how it is today. And there's, uh, there's undoubtedly a time, they found fossils on Antarctica, there's undoubtedly a time when, when Antarctica was, was lush and green. The question is, was it lush and green during the lifetime of the human species? Yes, this um, is where it gets tricky. And, and this, is where, this is where it gets tricky. Um, our, the, 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 the Homo sapiens line descends from a line that goes back about six million years, not much further than that, if we accept conventional evolutionary theory. So six million years ago, Antarctica is supposed to have been as cold and as frozen as it is today. Now, when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods in 1995, which is, which is my first book, Tracing the Possibility of a Lost Civilization, I was very interested in Antarctica. And I was interested in it because of the work of a previous researcher called Charles Hapgood. Charles Hapgood wrote a number of very important books. One of them is called Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings, which precisely goes into this issue of ancient maps that don't fit our understanding of what the world was, how the world was supposed to be known at that time. Um, and another is called The Path of the Pole. And he uh, proposed a phenomenon that he called Earth Crust Displacement, whereby from time to time, the entire outer crust of the Earth, like the skin of an orange, might shift leaving the core of the earth in place so that it could shit like so if you imagine a very loose orange skin the fruit is inside it's staying in place but you're shifting the skin around it well obviously then if that happens, that oh. could have been in warmer latitudes and could have been shifted into colder latitudes. And how often does this happen? Well, does it happen at all is the, is the yeah. first question. I mean, of, of all the, the theories I've looked at and supported, this is, this is the one that I've come in for the, for the most criticism for. Mm. Um, and I've been much more interested recently in the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis and the notion that, the, uh, that a cataclysm occurred around 12,800 years ago caused by impacts of comet fragments. And we can go into that. Um, but when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, although I was interested in comets, I was more interested in Earth crust displacement. Um, and and the, the standard academic response to that is, look, Antarctica has been frozen for millions of years. Um, and that rules out the whole Earth crust displacement argument. Um, I think that even those who are still researching this field would prefer it to be the mantle rather than the crust of the Earth that moves. Again, it's very technical. That moves in one piece. Um, there's a. But the idea is the Italian admiral called Flavio Barbiero, who, who wrote an article for my website, suggesting that Earth crust displacement could be kicked off by a comet impact, which hits, a, hits the Earth a glancing blow mm. and, and causes a, a shift of this kind taking place. But by and large, I don't. I don't argue these days that, uh, that Antarctica and Earth crust displacement are the mechanism we should be looking at. I'm, more, I'm much more interested in the very solidly scientifically grounded Younger Dryas impact. Back, to, uh, back in 1995, when I wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, I was searching around for many possibilities that could have caused a global cataclysm in the range of 12 to 13,000 years ago, because that's what all the astronomy pointed at, 12 to 13,000 years ago. And Hapgood's theory uh, seemed to me a very valuable and useful one. I still won't write it off. I won't dismiss it entirely. But I shifted in the direction of um, uh, the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, simply because I'm in a constant argument with mainstream academia. And the issue to me, the most important issue to me, uh, is the issue of a global cataclysm at the end of the Ice Age. What, what caused that cataclysm is a secondary issue. The mm. cataclysm itself is the primary issue. And I found the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis uh, a better, much more scientifically grounded explanation for that cataclysm uh, than the notion of Earth crust displacement. But do any archaeologists... Or All right, so I know this is really long, but I, uh, 
I, there's a really a method to my madness. Are you down just listening to all this? Because absolutely, you, I and and your reflections on it, and and yes, I I do agree that something happened almost thirteen thousand years ago. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. So I think it's worth listening to this whole thing. It's a remarkably eloquent, intelligent interview. This guy Schultz is a comedian, yet him and you will see his partners asked some absurdly good questions and so much information comes out here. It's like these guys just, just, all right, I'm just going to play it. <laughs> or any of these uh, pre-historians dispute the younger address? There's, a, there's still a lot of argument around it. There's, there's about 60 major scientists um, who are involved in the Comet Research Group. They're all credentialed scientists. They've all published dozens of papers in peer-reviewed journals, including Nature, including scientific reports, and many, many others on the, on the hypothesis. But there's also a group of academics who, who are opposed to it and, and uh, dispute that any impact ever took place. And then even in those who, who, who do accept that the Younger Dryas was a cataclysm, some think that it may have been caused by solar activity rather than by, by comet impact. How would that work? Well, it would certainly it would work um, at the end of the Younger Dryas. There are two moments in the Younger Dryas. The beginning is 12,800 years ago. It's it's a very strange moment in Earth history. This is, when, um, this, is, this is when the world's climate, which has been warming up for a few thousand years, the Ice Age is still very much present, a big ice caps on North America, big ice caps on Northern Europe, um, but it's been warming up gradually. And then 12,800 years ago, two things happened at once. First, a sudden cataclysmic drop in climate. The cold, it gets incredibly cold, uh, as cold as it was at the peak of the Ice Age more than 20,000 years ago. It gets incredibly cold, but then puzzlingly, there's a release of water into the world ocean. I say puzzlingly yeah. because when the Earth is freezing, you would not expect melt water to be going into the world ocean. It should be staying on the ice caps. And I cite the work of Cesare Emiliani and his work on the submergence of Bahamian corals. This is how, how do you know that sea level rose? There are certain corals that can only exist within a certain number of feet of the, of the sea surface. And when, they need the sunlight yeah, when they drown, yeah. that tells you the sea level has, has risen. And they point to a significant sea level rise 12,800 years ago at exactly the moment of this deep freeze. The comet impact hypothesis explains that because it says that the shock of the heat of the impact of large fragments of a comet on the North American and European ice caps would have been sufficient to release that freezing water into the world ocean. To cut the Gulf Stream, that's the central heating system of our planet. It's called the gro global meridional overturning circulation. It's these currents of warm and cold water that flow around the planet. And yeah. they, the, the Gulf Stream was cut and the Earth got extremely cold. So I think the comet impact hypothesis does best explain that. But so just real quick, so comet hits, yeah. cuts the Gulf Stream, mm -hmm. cutting the Gulf Stream. It cuts the Gulf Stream because it releases a huge quantity of meltwater from the North American ice cap almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So the comet hits the ice. Yeah. It is in North America. Yeah, and Europe. And Europe. Mm -hmm. That water cuts the Gulf Stream yes. because it releases all this, which was frozen freezing water. Freezing water. Gotcha. Goes gotcha. Into the world ocean. Temperature plummets. Temperature plummets. But at the same time, there's much more potential water in the oceans so that when the temperature does rise, now you have that meltwater. Well, no, so no, now we need to go on. 12,800 years ago, in 1,000 or 1,200 years after that, that's a window when all the great Ice Age megafauna go extinct. That's megafauna are? Saber-toothed tigers, right. woolly mammoths, mastodons, right. giant sloths. The whole collection yep. of, of famous Ice Age megafauna, they all go extinct in that window. Hmm. Um, and, and clearly, they didn't go extinct for no reason. It's the cataclysm of the Younger Dryas that made them extinct. Have you seen the, oh God, what is the gentleman's name? He's a guy who I believe like excavates up in Alaska for gold. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm forgetting what it is right now. But um, there are like images of woolly mammoths mm. who have been, had like their legs completely shattered, mm -hmm. but they're intact. Yeah. And is this a boneyard that's been Yes, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That, that's, that's very, very, very interesting. I've not been there. I've not looked into it yet, so I can't speak authoritatively about it. But it might speak to your opinion right there. Like, what, what I can else? say is that at Serrania de Lindosa in Colombia, there is an eight kilometer long rock art panel dated to 12,800 years ago, which shows these megafauna. It shows, it shows many of the extinct megafauna from that, from that, from that period. Um, to get back to the point, uh, so we have this window of about 1,200 years where the earth is very cold, the megafauna go extinct, but then 11,600 years ago, just as fast and dramatically as the earth went cold, the earth goes warm. You're looking okay. at a 10 degree rise in global temperatures in, in a couple hundred years. It goes in very, very, in geological terms, very hard, rapid and very fast. And, that, and sea level rises very quickly. And what is it called? 11,600 years ago, it's, it's called meltwater pulse 1B. There's another collapse of the ice sheets and huge amounts of water go into the world ocean. Now that, that could realistically be caused by a sudden burst of solar activity. But that's not what I go with. I, I, I still prefer the notion. Sorry, I accidentally paused the share and I meant to pause the uh, audio. We're just going to rewind it here uh, a moment. And we're going to go down to normal speed and really listen to what Graham Hancock is saying. Which melted down those ice sheets, but that's not what I go with. I, I, I still prefer the notion that we're dealing with sheets and huge amounts of water go into the world ocean. Now that, that could realistically be caused by a sudden burst of solar activity, which melted down those ice sheets, but that's not what I go with. I, I, I still prefer the notion that we're dealing with multiple bombardments from comet fragments. And in this case, 
you're looking at a comet fragment that goes into a world ocean uh, that sends up a huge amount of water vapor into the upper atmosphere, creates a greenhouse effect, and accounts for the warming that takes place at that time. So two comets. One that cooled things down and one that heated things up? Yeah, yeah. Any idea why one would cool down and one would heat up? Uh, it depends where the impact is. If the impact's on an ice cap and it's releasing enormous amounts of meltwater into the world ocean, you're going to make the world very cold. Okay. If the impact's in a world ocean and it's put, putting a huge amount of water vapor into the upper atmosphere, it's Got a greenhouse it. effect. Got and it. the world is going to get warmer. It's all theory. Mm -hmm. It's not fact. All, what is fact is the sudden warming at the end of the Younger Dryas and the sudden freezing at the beginning of the Younger Dryas. So we're searching for explanations for that. We're searching for explanations. I've, I've picked pick the one I, I back, but uh, I'm not claiming that I have to be right. It's uh, that what I do think is really important is recognizing this was a global cataclysm. It was sustained. It wasn't just a minute. It went on for a thousand years plus, uh, and it's in our backyard. It's in very relatively recent human history. We're almost at the edge of history when we go to 11,600 years ago. That's Weirdly, the date that Gobekli Tepe in Turkey is built, 11,600 years ago. <laughs> that, weirdly, is the date that Plato's Timaeus and Critias gives for the submergence of Atlantis, 11,600 years ago, <laughs> before our time. So what's happening to humanity in this 1,200-year window? I need, to be, I need to be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the, because uh, the archaeologists roll their eyes at any mention of Atlantis. If you, you even say the word Atlantis, right. they're automatically regarded as a member of the lunatic fringe. Okay. Uh, uh, and if you've even said that word, all your work, all the 30 years of work <laughs> right. you've done, the thousand dives that you've done yeah, on yeah. continental shelves all around the world, yeah. all of those can be written off simply because you said the word Atlantis. It's, right. it's flat earth for archaeologists. Um, okay, I have not watched what they say about Atlantis, which I, if you're down, we could just go to that or you could we could. You can, go, you can go to that if you want. Um, I, I definitely agree um, that some kind of water event happened across northern Africa and wiped out the eye of Africa, which potentially would have been Atlantis in that time period. Yeah. But yeah. but whether that's caused by solar flares, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they you did. You were saying you could heat up the earth or cool it down with a comet by hitting it mm -hmm. either in the ocean or in an ice cap. He also yeah. said you also could, if you just wanted to, uh, it, with a solar flare, you could do one of those by hitting it either, I think, in the same thing, either in an ice cap or in an ocean. I think the same deal, you could accomplish a targeted solar flare, could do either of those. So I believe, like, this entire thing, well, he also pointed, he really drew our attention to Antarctica, which I actually realized... I have a theory of all this coming together about element 115 and a big deposit of it in, in Antarctica could explain, could be the foundation of everything. And in this video, Hancock uh, really, you know, he actually doesn't emphasize Antarctica. The other guy does. The other guy says it's really eloquent story. Um, anyways, uh, but do you remember where we started this discussion with solar flare? Mm -hmm. announcements on Twitter, there is, there are people that believe, I mean, and I thought that's what I saw, there's some data that one has just happened that it's going to hit Earth on a specific date, and people saying this might be one of those solar flares that did, uh, that can change the climate for a thousand years, like Hancock might have just been warning us that, um, he also took, drew attention to the Earth displacement theory, the crust Earth displacement theory, mm -hmm. which you know, that's a deep, deep track for me that what if the Earth crust, what if the Earth is a giant uh, spaceship that and the crust could be movable? Just a nudge of the crust on certain things with enough element 115 to move a mass this big. You know, you could control, you know, earthquakes and stuff like that on the surface. And he really, you know, so he's dropping the ball on some really deep threads that if any of them are true, these aliens could be playing with the climate of Earth. And, and this solar flare that is about to hit during the elections next year, I think, is what they're at. I'm trying to get an I, I believe well, it really did happen. There is really what during the flare. elections next year is the peak of what they're considering this higher solar flare period, where the, because the sun goes through like a seven is it a seven year or an eleven year cycle? It goes through a cycle of greater periods of solar flares, and then it's quieter. 
if that makes any sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, so should we, what should we do here now? Um, I feel like this is kind of, I'm processing new information. There's a lot of stuff that's happened in the last few weeks. Uh, do you want to, where should we go? Well, I wanted to hear, um, nobody in there. No one's come in to see the Hancock. Oh, it's not. Maybe it's because I put Tate in the title. It's not Tate. It's Schultz. Uh, cause Tate's some comedian everyone hates. Can you redo it? Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, Schultz. And uh, yeah. I mean, right. like if a solar flare hits us, we're going to have, you know, you know, geomag, it's a geomagnetic storm. So our power grids would be affected, satellites, navigation systems, electronics. Um, but it's not going to like burn off an ice cap. Well, you see, that is what Hancock was saying. He said, so the, we have evidence that in the past, this is exactly what happened. There was a sudden, um, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm gonna share. Yeah, that there was a sudden, uh, a solar flare could cause one of these sudden dramatic 10 degree shifts in earth temperatures. And I think, I think what he's saying is, let's say a solar flare did just erupt from, or this is what I'm saying. Okay. If a solar flare did just erupt, from the sun, and I can't find confirmation that this just happened, but let's just there, say I, there was one June twentieth. There was a really big one June twentieth. I'm trying there to find talk it. about when it would hit Earth. Like there was some, or when the a bulk of the most deadly, dangerous radiation. I think there's at least a minimal discussion that it could take out satellites, but there is Hancock is I think indicating if it hits if it's targeted towards an ice cap and we should be able to calculate where it tar- hits then we might even be able to predict that this could cause a sudden increase in earth temperature a sudden melting of an ice sheet and that would cause a sudden uh, global water issue of both it would you know the first it might actually be like a uh Okay, so this solar flare already up. hit earth it, it only it's like the speed of light it only takes so is it a, a few minutes, yeah, yeah. Um, so like when it's, when like a coronal mass ejection happens, happens, um, like taking out our satellites means disabling the electronics. It's not actually like a wave of hot material burning them up or anything. It's it's literally you know electromagnetic interference. Um, hmm. Does that make sense? Like it's. Um, so it could, it would be like the same thing as if we had like a nuke burst in the air over us. Uh, we would, we would get that, uh, pulse that would knock out our electronic stuff, but not hurt, you know, not hurt us necessarily. Okay. Right. All right. So I think I've gotten, I've gotten distracted by the solar flare as one of the potential reasons for water melting and so i mean i think it could be a part of the puzzle uh but you know what yeah i definitely have to research that more because i've never heard of a solar flare actually doing anything to the temperature now it might uh, it might affect like the um we have that magnetic shield around earth oh right that helps protect us from solar radiation so it might mess that up for a while (laughs) yeah um that's true, and it could knock out communications. All right, so in any but it, case, but it's more it's more of an, a magnetic field hitting us. All right, okay. Well, maybe we can let me reset my brain, and we can like reframe the conversation. I, if I go back to my my previous uh, genius of the day, because this is like because Satoshi Nakamoto takes us back to aliens in a whole different way, and it frames it in a more broader like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But where do you? What, what would do? be, I would love to hear what your connection is between Komodo and aliens. Where, what is your connection for Bitcoin and aliens? Yeah. Well, I want, like I said, I was going to make Satoshi the genius of the day mm-hmm. because of a connection that has come together for me. And I'll just summarize it quickly. Yeah. Uh, there's increasing evidence that aliens are real, that the government knows about them right you're with me on this yeah okay so and it seems like 
they've been around a long time, like way, way before humanity. And I think that's another thing Graham Hancock was sort of establishing there. He's like, humanity's mm-hmm. been around six million years. And he's saying, basically, he was hinting, there are pyramids in Antarctica that were in a lush green, you know, thing 90 million years ago. And it's, it, so he's saying, he basically is hinting the only way that could be is either humans were here 90 million years ago or someone else was. So he's telling everyone on Earth, go look in Antarctica, which is exactly what he also on the Internet. Anyways, so here's the deal. If aliens are real and they've been around mm-hmm. before humanity, they have their own Internet, their own computer system, their own banking system. They have to. They have to exchange digital information. So what do you think the relationship is between their alien computer system and humans' mainstream banking computer system? Do you think they're basically completely on top of ours and they know everything that's going on inside the you know, mainstream infrastructure, because they probably control all the humans that control all the humans that control every bit of it. It's part of their, it's got to be, they have to have an information system dominance plan, these aliens, they have to. And you know what would beat that? A decentralized, encrypted, human peer-to-peer network. And it's literally, Satoshi Nakamoto invented exactly what humanity needed to build to escape the control of any alien society that might have control of the mainstream infrastructure. It, basically, it's a it's a step out of the game. You can't stop crypto. You can't stop Satoshi Nakamoto. And he knew, I think he, Satoshi Nakamoto might have been the first CIA intelligence insider that, you know, or he, I mean, he might, he knew this was important. And the only other people amongst humans that knew it seemed to be deep in the CIA and military industrial complex. So I think he knew this was a key. And do you know when Satoshi Nakamoto stopped talking to, um, uh, his best friend in the Bitcoin world. It was when I forget his name, but he died many years ago, and uh, he was the first guy to help promote Bitcoin. Um, and he he messaged Satoshi and said, "I was contacted by the CIA who wanted an explanation of how Bitcoin worked." And he was like, "And that and Satoshi never emailed me again. That was it. Cut off all contact the moment." And that's because Satoshi, I think, knew whoever. Yeah, maybe Satoshi knew we were in a flipping. There were aliens. They he didn't trust any of the network. We needed a way around it for money. We needed a way around to exchange money outside of alien control, and that's what he created. We now, and so probably all this comes down to is the aliens. If they have an infrastructure, you know, the best they could have is something like Bitcoin, like the CBD, the centralized digital currency that uh, China's creating. No, mm-hmm. they are basically creating one, which the aliens would love because, you know, the the way to control a currency is make it perfect and make it, and then just put it under your control, like of the Communist mm-hmm. Party. Chinese Communist Party, highly suspicious their relationship with aliens, you know, if and there are probably different factions of aliens, but, oh my gosh. And now, so anyway, that's the Satoshi Nakamoto thing, but I've got some threads, some crazy other threads to follow, but anything you want to, I'll, I'll stop talking for a moment. <laughs> just stop talking i love hearing this um yeah i've heard theories too that uh the creator of ethereum uh was actually alien um which is strange but what i find most odd is that um people getting investigated for bitcoin always talk about the caa and the fbi people talking about aliens talk about the cia and the FBI. Why? What is it because there's more top secret clearance in the in the CIA than the FBI doesn't have as much secrecy? But, you know, the FBI is the one that should be investigating anything in the continental United States. Right. Um, so, so you're are you saying that the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation might there, at some point if they felt like the CIA and the Air Force and, you know, uh, what, Raytheon uh, and Lockheed Martin were all secretly hiding, say, the most important secret in the history of humanity. And someone, let's just say, like Ross Coulter had said a few months ago, or like a year mm-hmm. ago, that someone walked into Biden's office and said, guess what? I got a surprise for you. Um, uh, uh, this is your daily intelligence briefing. I mean, let's just say someone like, you know, was the person that briefed the White House at one mm-hmm. point in his career. And he had like an initial big G as his last name. So let's say he was briefed <laughs> the president one day 
And he said to the president, I got to tell you some stuff that's going to be hard to hear. Please bring your family and everyone in here that you trust. And he said to him, the Air Force and really the CIA is secretly hiding the biggest secret in history. And a network of us have been working since uh, since Kennedy was killed mm-hmm. to, to overturn this. It's the greatest spy story in history, but we don't trust the CIA and we don't trust the Air Force. We need you to fire some people. Here's the list of people. We need you to just fire them. We're not going to kill them. We're just going to fire them all. And once we fire them all, then we're going to have to get the FBI and everyone that is a good guy, and we're going to have to take all the bad guys out of every bit of the infrastructure of the U.S. secretly without causing a global war and, and secretly be without anyone knowing this is happening. This has to have happened at some point. At some point, some president and it just had to be like, can all the good guys stand up and tell me who the bad guys are? We're going to fire all the bad guys. And then hopefully if some of them throw a tantrum, you know, we might have to march them out of the White House in handcuffs, which we can do. And Biden had to go on TV and say that, remember? He had to go on TV and say, if Trump refused to, I mean, this actually, I think, is one of the biggest moments in history. And I think we're going to find out this had to do with a fight none of us really understood, you know, that Biden said, if Trump, if you don't leave the White House, I believe I can give the Secret Service an order and the FBI, and I believe they will support me and take you mm-hmm. out of that. And I think that's because, the, you know, but if the aliens were on one side or the other of that, you know, Trump could have held it. And it's like, who are they going to obey? Anyways. Um, yeah. So well, it does I, seem like there's a real schism. Um, that that there's definitely this whole military industrial complex that is operating outside of it. I mean, look all the way back to when George Bush uh, acknowledged that there were CIA black sites um, operating that tortured people. You know, back in like two 2006, right? Um, that that was a very obvious. These things are operating outside of our control, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, just look at what is happening with Kennedy, the Kennedy assassination, and what a major candidate for office, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., is going on Sky News Australia and mm-hmm. saying that he definitely believes the CIA killed John F. Kennedy, and he has all. He says he could prove that in a court of law. He just, I just, I could play this video of him, and he says. There is less evidence that RFK Jr., his dad, was killed by the CIA, but he said there is clear evidence that he was killed differently than the story. I mean, he says the Mm -hmm. autopsy of his dad proves that he was basically shot from behind. He said, I mean, I don't know if you heard this, but I've I've never heard this level of detail, but he's like, he says the stuff of his dad shows that he was shot in close proximity four times in the back and the neck with a gun at his back. And that is not where Siran Siran was standing. And they know where the bullets, Siran Siran did fire a gun, Mm -hmm. but he was in front of him and fired at him. And I'm not even sure he hit him once. So this means RFK Jr. And and they have witnesses that all say it was Siran Siran. But the autopsy shows it's impossible. But why is this? How could they have hidden this autopsy for all this time? And it's like, and how could a presidential candidate be breaking this at the same? I mean, this is... um. So he's going around literally saying the CIA killed his dad in a way that is he's really calling him out. And it looks like if the CIA, you know, that they may have if that's where the alien truth was hiding, it may be just really true. They may have killed Kennedy because he mm-hmm. was going to share the truth. And, OK, this all goes back to Grush. And it was so strategic yeah. of David Grush taking us all the way back to 1933. He says he's basically saying to all of humanity, look, there might I mean, he's gently saying there's a might be a giant history, but let's if we just face the truth of what happened between 1933 and that means all of Nazi Germany, all of that genocide, all of Hitler and the nuclear bombs, every nuclear atomic bomb that's been dropped. We need to reevaluate everything. And then, you know, when they ask, has anyone been murdered to hide this secret? He said over the years, yes. So he could have just said, yes, that could be one murder. He, in, by answering from between 1933 and now, over the years, there have been people murdered to hide this secret. He is daring you to ask which, how, how many or what, I mean, and, if, and I think the answer 
could just be two. It might be like JFK and RFK might be the answer. And it might, and if that's the CIA, they've been hiding that secret since then. And you could just imagine the people inside the infrastructure, the FBI and the white, well, first of all, the president, can you imagine every president and everyone in there that's realized, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? They killed, a, they killed one of my presidents. I mean, if you told me they killed the hospital commissioner that had my seat, you know, before me, yeah, that's like, Look, terrifying. I'm, I'm happy to be your leader, but if murder is one of the consequences of me doing my job, I don't want this job. That's not, mm-hmm. I'm not interested. And so can you imagine how, I mean, this, I think, is why Jimmy Carter broke down crying when they told him, yes, aliens are real. Because it was, yes, aliens are real. And the last president that tried to tell the public was killed. And we're working on it. We're like, and they had to be coming <laughs> up with a plan all this time to try to figure out how to completely take out the CIA capable of murdering any leader of our country that betrays them. And so I think we're seeing, I think the first one to come out was Lou Elizondo. I think he and Christopher Mellon were the lead mm-hmm. guard and they were all like, okay, if they can for three years or six years, however long they've been working on it, just tell the truth and not get killed. I mean, everyone's watching to see if they get killed <laughs> and they, they, the CIA apparently is, you know, is unwilling or gave, you know, they decided not to kill them, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and now we've got Grush, who basically just Lou Elizondo, too. He's basically the and they he's come out and no one's killed Grush. And they know. And now we got Robert Kennedy, who's literally saying the CIA killed my parents. He has not yet said this as any, he hasn't commented on the aliens at all yet. But so no presidential candidate has. Can you imagine what are what are they going to say once Robert F. Yeah. Kennedy starts talking about the alien subject? You can't. It's, this is like a this is a death match between these presidential candidates. Anyways, yeah. So, uh, well, when, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, please go um, ahead. Um, I was just thinking about how Roswell happened in June of 1947, and the CIA was created in September of that same year. Yeah, in the Air Force, it's like. Yeah. Everything goes back to Rob. That's why Grush was like 1933. Why? That's our first. Let's just pretend that was the first moment humanity in the U.S. realized humans or aliens were real. We mm-hmm. found it in Italy, thanks to the Vatican. So then in 1947, magically, a alien spaceship crashes in Roswell. And they, whoever made this crash happen, had it, you know, had the government enough of it believing it was a crash because it landed like a crash. They took it and they had to create a nice, beautiful spot to hide it. Where'd they take it? Let's just say it was, let's just pretend it's all right. Patterson air force base. Let's just pretend mm-hmm. that they like, they stuck it in there or an area or an S 14. Yeah. The place Bob Lazar said they stuck some probably there. And then, um, you know, so 1947, they create the CIA and the Air Force. They create, maybe they give control to this new branch of the military. They put their toadies in the top of it and they say, people that they know they can keep their loyalty for decades. And they maybe, you know, if you're a Freemason or you're in some secret fraternity like Skull and Bones, you like put a fraternity brother in charge of an entire branch of the military. And then you start to cut up the military into these bureaucratic different areas so that you can always control one. You've got to keep control of this. Air Force hangar and this land and all the soldiers that are controlling access. You have to maintain that for generations. So you have to have a full branch of military. And so you have inside the CIA, those are your strongholds. It would be the CIA and the Air Force. And then you'd have all these black ops, you know, and then to get out of government oversight, you have to use private armies. So you start, you lock, you need a Lockheed Martin and you give Lockheed Mm -hmm. Martin its own hangar inside of an Air Force base. So you can't even so you have two layers of protection. You have whoever is in charge of the Air Force, which who Biden could have taken control of. But let's just pretend for decades you can keep control of the Air Force. You keep control of this base, Air Force military base. And then civilians who have different rights are the ones that you let into this inner sanctuary and see the truth of the alien spaceships and everything. And, you, and the soldiers are never going to get in there. So you can insulate that in a weird way. I mean, the double layer. So anyways, it looks like that could be what's – and then, you know, other things go back to 1947. You know how these aliens might communicate using spectrum airwaves? 
You know what started in 1940s, like 1950, was the FCC, where they suddenly said, hey, these parts of the spectrum you can touch, and these ones you can't. And you know what? We're not allowed to touch certain parts that, like, travel through stone and metal better than anything else. Maybe there's some biological spectrums that they use for their telepathy that if we just stuck our microphones on, we could literally just listen into what they're saying. Because I bet our encryption and decryption is getting close to their power. Anyways, we should, I'm going to... We should put up. I never screen. thought about the FCC. Uh, so the FCC actually started before. Look at that. That's um, right out of the statue. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be the first thing the alien said. Uh, create an agency to control, to protect our spectrum, because you're going to be able to, we don't want you to ever hear us. <laughs> that's that's really weird. I mean, just thinking about how th- everything is manufactured so that you can't go past certain yeah, that is interesting. It all goes back to here. I got this on the. Look at that. There's an un out. There's some this early part, un out. But you're like, but the ones that they have control for, like radio and TV, they like, you know, they just don't let you touch it. They have such. They've had militant control over the spectrum since a year after the first contact with aliens. That could be the. They, and maybe it's literally like. It could be the FCC that is the ultimate secret keeper, the first corporate secret, you know, agency network that is really the gatekeeper of everything. Because once we know to look here, amateurs can build stuff to sniff on this, you know. We could be sniffing this spectrum like crazy. And, and Yeah, if, also, you build, if you built your own, maybe that's why there's no Radio Shack anymore. <laughs> right, right. They, they got to get the amateur radio. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, radios were not like uh, as carefully regulated, right? And so you could go back farther in the spectrum and like pick up TV, and you know what I mean? And you'd pick up like people talking, I think, on ham radios. Um, yeah, especially in the AM channel, uh, on the AM radios, like the the dial radio is very uh, careful, like today like there's hard stops right yeah uh, yeah radio shack radio shack okay well i guess we're gonna yeah. reopen Radio Shack in port townsend anyone that needs one i'll uh we're gonna we have a radio shack club and you just sort of show up on the beach anywhere around port townsend and we play radio shack radio shack radio shack cia are you listening Right, okay. Well, think about that. I mean, like when there were radio shacks and, and there were lots of no name little little businesses too that sold pieces parts. Um, and nowadays, if you want to have anything like that, you have to order it. And like, there is such a paper trail, right? There is such a paper trail if you wanted to order any kind of electronics, right? You know, so, it's like, geez, electronics are so simple. It's almost like you could like barely you just need basic metal working wires i mean anyways i I mean if you just wanted to listen in on to on a radio simple rate i mean this has this has to be technology well this is one of my theories what if there is biological technology capable of producing very low frequency low energy radio waves that travel like large distances like a voice almost, but a radio wave. And what if it was like, like, but they would need it to be really quiet in that area or else it would interfere with their biological radio wave communication. And, you know, they would be using this telepathy as a way to control people, right? So isn't it amazing? In 1934, humanity all agreed not just to leave completely white and untouched the earliest part of the radio spectrum that, has anyone ever done an experiment to see if a vibrating insect has ever produced a radio wave or anything? Have we ever tested to see if the brain produces any sort of radio waves? Or is this a part of science? Like Graham Hancock is saying, look, if you look at archaeology, the academia has been built to shame certain people that dare to cross certain lines of theory. What if that's also happening in the scientific realm? They are the academia and medical fields absolutely shame and ban you from researching a simple thing like could a brain ever produce a dang radio wave that could go straight from my head to your head even if it's only bluetooth distance like even if it was only five feet it'd be darn useful never heard of that research all right 
I mean, there is lots of research on the electrical brain waves. Um, I mean, it, the same as a radio wave. Um, I just want to know, you, it's just telepathy. Can we do telepathy? I mean, Elon Musk is going to give us a chip soon that lets us do telepathy at higher parts of the spectrum. Wouldn't it be kind of embarrassing if he puts it in our head and then finally someone's like, well, Never noticed that the pineal gland actually serves as a mini radio transponder that allows reptiles and certain animals with this brain deformation to be able to telepathic. In fact, I think Gary Nolan, one of the first things he said he found in his research about experiencers was a commonality in their brain structure. Um, oh, oh, there was a really clever, clever thing Hancock said in his answer. I just want to point out. Mm-hmm. And said, um, when Schultz asked him, uh, blah, 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 you know, it was like, okay, Hancock said six million years ago is when human, the, the line of human sap, uh, homo sapiens began six million years ago. Mm-hmm. He said the, but the way he said it is if you follow conventional, you know, knowledge, uh, conventional story, it's that the, 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 the dominant Homo sapien line begins six million years ago, and he dares you to trace the Homo sapien lines because what if they because if Antarctica has something 90 million years ago, what if you can if you just like looked at the Homo sapien and he names like seven books like he really strategically names seven like like a, seven books and people and so he's daring anyone who's listening to this any supercomputer any AI like hey, this is what I'm telling you. Check these seven books, start 90 million years ago, and start with, and somehow Antarctica was lush and green, either because mm-hmm. the mantle moved or because it was 90 million years ago. Take your choice. Either way, if it was if it was uh, 6 million years ago that it moved, or 12,000. He's saying something crazy happened 12,000. It could have moved then. It could have moved, you know, instead of a comet or a solar flare, it could just be that the mantle moved one time to, you know, to cool things off and it kept Ant- uh, Antarctica in the warm, lush green as long as it wanted and then moved it back into the ice when it wanted. If, I mean, that could have been intentional. Um, but he's just like he's daring you to check these lines. Like, you know, he's like six million, you know, he's like somehow – it's also, it's just throwing your attention to Antarctica. Somehow Antarctica has these pyramids and it might, he's just like, and he said, and the most biggest thing he said, which it's like, he said, World War Three will not happen until someone breaks the treaty of about not taking any minerals out of Antarctica and not, you know, and not, and breaking that Antarctica treaty. And if, you know, if you look, Antarctica has, if you search uh, Google, uh, like what world leaders have visited Antarctica, you'll find that many presidents, including Obama, I think even Trump, went to Antarctica. But if you search, has, a, wow, has, has Russia gone to, as Russian leaders have never gone to Antarctica and they're not a part of the Antarctica Treaty. You know, it's like very specific countries ha- are a part of this Antarctica Treaty. And it's kind of similar to the Grush uh, Five Eyes sort of thing. It, well, it, it, like 200 million, all the continents were together in Pangaea, and they drifted apart. And so we don't even need any of this, like, uh, you know, uh, rot- uh, crest of the earth or anything, because it's basic plate tectonics that Antarctica was not on the ice cap 90 years ago. Um, they, okay. you know. All of the continents, like, are still drifting, and so they're drifting at, you know, like, you know, three inches a year kind of thing. Um, yeah, we know these are plates that move. We know so, these plates yeah, that move. So, so. so we, we already know, like, it's not a big mystery that Antarctica was uh, lush 90 million years ago uh, during the dinosaur time because uh, of plate tectonics. Um, now, Uh, I did hear something yesterday about, um, I I read a study about um, DNA uh, DNA suggests that there were placental mammals 65 million years ago. Uh, 
that there were placental mammals that existed at the time that the dinosaurs had their uh, cataclysm. Um, and so the big anim- the big dinosaurs died off and the placental mammals then started to evolve. And there's not fossil records of placental mammals at the time, but based on calculations of, uh, of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not evolution, but, uh, mutation. There we go. Based on calculations of mutation, uh, DNA, uh, placental mammals in Shabakar. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's kind of the first tie in to why placental mammals became the dominant life form after the, you know, because, uh, like the, the first fossils for placental mammals are way sooner, like 55 million years ago. I mean, like, uh, there's a big fossil gap, right? So, uh, very, very interesting if they're say, if they're thinking that there are structures in Antarctica that are 90 million years, because those go way before placental mammals. Um, those would be way before even primates. That would be, um, that would have to be some dinosaur species, aka reptilians. Yeah, well, you know, I think like we could at some point I'd like to do just a nice dive into the reptilian theory and mm-hmm. really like start with the Lacerta transcript because I think it's like um, it seems to be a compelling structure to how this could all be explained. I mean, and she Lacerta provides if you just assume. Anyways, do you want to do do you want to do that a little bit now and do a little Lacerta discussion? Uh, sure, or... I have I I have a hard stop at one thirty. I guess that'd be twelve your time, so forty five okay. minutes. Okay. Uh, well, let me see. Are there any other topics we should discuss besides theories? Maybe we can. Discuss... Well, I do have a question for you before we launch into it. I don't know the answer to this. Do you know if there's like sonar studies about what's underneath the ice? in the Antarctic, like there are for Iceland. I know Iceland has had extensive uh, topography uh, studying well, about the ice, ca- you know, if the ice wasn't there, it would look like. Do do we have that for Antarctica? That is a great question. And I bet you, if we listen to that Hancock-Schultz next part about Atlantis, actually, I need to listen to that entire Hancock-Schultz interview. Because I believe Hancock will just drop. You need to look at this location in the ocean. And this, and he's like he's like laying like the seeds, mm-hmm. I think, for everyone to just stop and look at Earth, Antarctica. Look at the mantle. Look at 90 million years ago. Assume humanity. I mean, just let Hancock give us his theory. Assume what does he see in the human record? Assuming aliens are real. He's got to have a theory. He's got to have a theory for this entire framework, and we need to hear what it is. And I think he's starting to spill it on that Schultz show. And I other do, people also. I do see they are planning to uh, get all of the seabed and everything around Antarctica by 2030 uh, to map the entire ocean floor oh. and Antarctica. Um, so, Can play? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead and play. That would be wonderful. No, I want to play a different video for you because oh. I didn't even get the second. It really because from the Pat McAfee show. Did you hear about this one? No. Gallagher, Congressman Gallagher went on Pat McAfee. This is bigger than Rubio. Going, do you want to? Can you? Want to I hear heard it? a lot about Rubio. I did not hear this other one. It, it's weird, but this one I think is even bigger. Here, I'm gonna share. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, but that's everybody. fine. That's fine. That's great. Let me find my playlist. My alien. Okay, we're just going to actually start at the beginning of the show because I think it'll help sort of... uh, You're not screen sharing. There you go. Okay. Hey, what? Go. Oh, yeah. Go Thank you, guys. 
Congratulations. Didn't even have to see the number one overall pick coming up in the draft, Mr. Steens, although we did see him warm up. He threw a fuck all the way in fuck ups. Tough to watch. <laughs> hey, Cincinnati. Zach Wilson throws a completion. Crazy story. Even okay, I guess I will have to go to the uh, clip rather than try to find it in the show. But if you watch how it's sort of like the way he introduces this congressman, it's just like you came here to talk about stuff. And anyways, we'll just go to it. This guy does stuff. Yes, he yeah. does. I believe, I don't know if it's the, I don't know the fucking titles of it. I don't know if he's in the House. I don't know if he's in the Senate. What? I don't know what his actual <laughs> job is. I have uh -huh. no idea. He's a congressman who was able to ask questions to what? somebody that was supposed to have all the answers whenever it came to UFOs and aliens after the Pentagon had decided to release some stuff. We thought we were going to get some real information. We didn't get shit out of that whole thing. But we did learn about was this man out of Wisconsin's 8th Congressional District. Hell yeah. Marine. Congressman Mike Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> what an honor to be here. My gosh. It was awesome, guys. <laughs> you look uh, sad. Congressman. Oh. Congressman, the shirt, honestly. Oh. Yeah. That was, uh, I mean, that was a part of the conversation. <laughs> that was part of the con uh, conversation last time. Because, what I wear. Yeah, I was saying, yeah. I didn't know this about Congressman, but as soon as you walked in, big pop out of everybody. Oh, yeah. That, that is what you choose to wear, and we'll dive into that, obviously. We got uh, extras in the back. Very we'll nice of you. Thank, Thank you. God. Very, very nice of you. All right, let's dive into this. Um, you have been incredibly kind to us. You have reached out to me when, uh, to keep my eyes peeled for potentially something that's coming when it comes to UFOs and aliens and everything like that. With what just took place allegedly in Vegas and everything else that seemingly be smoke, 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 smoke everywhere with this, are we anywhere near a time where you think from the information that you have as a congressman, which I still don't know what the fuck that is, but as a congressman, are we going to get any info, you think? Is this really going to be something in our life soon, you think? Yeah, I actually do. So if you think about what we've done since I was last on the show we had that hearing which i think everyone agrees was completely unsatisfying yeah. we didn't get any answers i asked some basic questions about historical incidents they couldn't answer so what do we do after that we actually passed with uh senator rubia so he go with a very i mean it's a again incredibly informative intelligent discussion and at some point he says his theory of an ancient civilization of humans the information. Why is now the time we need the information more than ever before? Because we keep getting more of these incidents that people are reporting. I think with I got to just find the his where he says the ancient. Uh... You know, I just have to have a little gripe about technology here. Everything is closed captioned now. Why can we not search we need videos the more than ever before? Yeah, let's see. Do we have the transcripts? Right. It drives um, me crazy. You got, you got the transcript. Oh, here. you do have the transcript. Okay. So let me see what we can do with it. Copy the transcript. Uh, oh, we could put it into ChatGPT and have it like. I'm just gonna. We'll just go for that. ChatGPT might be too. But much. like, it literally should just be built into YouTube at this point, where you can search a video for something oh. and it will take you there, right? Like. How about this? We'll go to Bing. I'm going to share my Bing screen because it should know, it should be able to tell us what he said about, um, but he's like, uh, let me see. All right, Microsoft uh, did a congressman discuss UFOs on the McAfee podcast. And where the follow-up will be. Oh, yeah, Gallagher. What did Gallagher say about aliens coming from Earth? So he says, it says, yes, a congressman did discuss UFOs on the McAfee podcast. Um, okay. Gallagher said that one possible explanation of supposed UFO sighting was the so-called Terminator theory. They, they, so that was the AI theory. He said another hypothesis, he said, was that as opposed to being us from the future, 
It could actually be an ancient civilization that's just been hiding here and is suddenly showing itself. And he compared it to the Transformers franchise, which was a, which you could just think of as an AI alien species that might have been mm-hmm. hiding on Earth. I guess this is what, I feel like they're pushing this, that the ancient species could be uh, AI. And that's like why this, like, it sort of combines with the whole fear of AI theory that the aliens could be AI. You know, it doesn't really matter. They could be reptilian. They could be AI or they could be both. But he, this guy is literally saying they could, an ancient civilization that's been hiding here. I mean, there's a congressman that just went on this Pat McAfee show to say ancient there could be ancient aliens. If the same week Rubio says that this guy is true, that's that's more than. And then I feel like the, him going on. And did you see how McAfee introduced him? You kind of got to rewatch it because it's just like it was just a setup. And I feel like if you also go back and rewatch the, the Hancock Schultz interview, you'll be like, oh, my gosh, Schultz and this whole team and Hancock were in a room prepping for this interview. And Schultz, it knows like he is like performing at a at a level of intelligence you have never seen from this guy before. He's a comedian, or he might be a deep, deep CIA operative in on this. Really, he's been like, yeah, you know, or or just he's, you know, I feel like Hancock and this congressman came in here and said, we have some serious stuff and we want to share it on the bro network, on the male bro military <laughs> network now, and just get real and be like, hey, let's drink some beers. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, aliens are living on Earth with us, bro. They are here, bro. Antarctica, bro. There's there's like, there's everything is in Antarctica, bro. Maybe we should go to Antarctica, bro. Let's go there. Let's look, just look at the Air Force. Wait until they say Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. This is what I realized today. The president could have said, this is what I would have done if I was the president. The, the first move would have been Okay, Air Force commander, you're fired. I'm taking control of the Air Force. And then I'm going to inspect every mm-hmm. Air Force base top to bottom. That had to have happened on some date. And I think it, it might either it was really recently or it happened subtly and we never saw it. But I do know the Navy commander of the base across the water from me, like I can walk to it, just got removed and replaced two weeks ago. So, so it mm-hmm. might be the big military move if we check if every military base in the u.s just changed commanders i think that was the move you know you'd have to put people you could trust in charge of all the guns and so first you take wright patterson air force base you say hey wright patterson you are now under command of me the president of the united states and now you've got this lockheed martin private contractor sitting in the middle of an air force base that used to be friendly ground and is now in control of a president who knows kennedy and was killed by the group hiding what's inside of this, you know, this uh, Lockheed Martin thing in Wright-Patterson. And so at some point, the president had to be like, yo, bros, all my military bros, it's time to win the alien war. Take the Lockheed Martin, you know, hangar on Wright-Patterson. And they had to have Mm -hmm. done it. It probably was a, I think it was probably a nonviolent takeover. And it could have literally happened any time in the last two years. It could have happened two years ago. It could have happened two weeks ago when you know, during the Russian coup, it could have been happening there. Like that could have been, it could have been during the, uh, the shoot down missile of the air balloons. That could have been part of a secret hot war for the control of the U S military that we didn't even realize. I don't know. It's hard to know what's happening, but, um, anyways, that's, uh, those are some of the threads for me. Yeah. I, I was just thinking about military bases. Um, have had a big upheaval in the last year or so because they're going through and naming them. Um, they're renaming a whole bunch of military installations because uh, they were uh, named after Confederate generals. Um, and the Biden administration said, look, you know, in this era, that's no longer okay. And so there's like over a thousand military locations are getting their names changed. And I wonder how much of that, like, um, when, when they're changing location names, like, how, how much gets kind of lost in the shuffle there, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, that's... Well, that's a very ultimate act. That Maybe that's it. That's, like, the ultimate. It could be the secret way of changing the flag of the base. 
You know, I mean, if you think yeah. if, if the military has been hiding, if the CIA and the Air Force has been hiding alien technology since 1933 at least, you, you don't want to move it a lot. So you're going to use some underground, some military base or some private bases that are super controlled. You're not going to want to move it a lot. So S4, you know, Bob Lazar has told us exactly where the things were in S4. You have to think at some point, I mean, maybe that, that presidents have been told since Bob Lazar went public, yeah, if you try to go there, you will be killed by Kennedy. Maybe that's basically the first thing you're told as president. You can't go to S4. So at some point, you know, I mean, Christopher Mellon, he, he went on to, uh, you know, the Joe Rogan podcast and said he went to Area 51. You know what I never realized about that? Christopher Mellon said that, but he didn't say I ever went to S4. He might have been daring the president to say, whoa, what if you went and checked out S4 <laughs> and maybe Biden or whoever was president at that time did. Maybe Trump did. Maybe Trump actually, like, did some stuff to help with this battle between presidents and disclosure since Kennedy and RFK and maybe even Marilyn Monroe. Why would presidents go visit Antarctica? I'm still kind of processing. Have you seen it. how many have? You want to? That know? you said that. Like I, I've just. Oh, let's let's like, ask a, what. Um, so I was experience. I was looking that up, and I was looking up uh, also the topography thing. This is really strange. So I put it at the Times um, uh, NASA. I just linked it in our chat in Zoom. Um, NASA is talking about flights over Antarctica and it's so minimal. Why would you, if you were trying to discover more about Antarctica, why, why would you not go in like a grid pattern over the whole thing? Right. Yeah. Very, very weird. Um, so if, if you click the link in there, you'll see like, there's just like these very sparse trips that flights took to study Antarctica. That what? Why? Why? I'll, share, I'll share this in the. Uh... I mean, I know it's one specific program they were doing called the Ice Bridge, but what? Including some never before surveyed improving the coverage and accuracy of a portion of this important data set. What? Bedmap 2 gives scientists... I mean, they've got, like, satellite view here where they... ...along with ice thickness and surface elevation data. But you can see the flights. Like, why do the flights look like that? Why are they not in a grid pattern? Yeah, and if you go back to that Hancock and Schultz interview, the minute... Hancock, he he shows an ancient map. They put it up on the screen. Like Hancock, like casually mentions it, and he says, "Oh yeah, if you look at this ancient map at this specific point, you will see, like, I think it's a pyramid." And he's daring the world by in that little moment of that hour discussion. He drops mm-hmm. some serious, like, easily can confirm. And so, like, he's basically saying, "Bro, what if we went to that one spot?" <laughs> you know? Uh, well, hey, why is there so much area that's not covered? Together. Like, well, maybe it's not an alien. I mean, maybe that, that's the that's the most fun answer. I mean, there's an ancient theory is that at the center of Antarctica, where the treaty, I mean, have you seen the treaty lines? They all go to that center point. What if there's just a big deposit of the most valuable mineral on Earth, like element, you know, 115? Um and maybe even one of the comments was put it there. It was like part of a war. Maybe they dropped element, or maybe it was just part of how they manage Earth, is they put a big piece of element 115 at each polar cap, and then they can, like, control the shift of the Earth when they want to because it literally would move it. That would be enough. That would probably work. I mean, the things you could do with element 115. Yeah, it just makes scientists understanding of the- no sense. Oh, man. Right? That is... I need some. I need really need some other people to dive into that Hancock Schultz interview yeah. and the guy happy because that's some serious. Uh, well, I don't know. Are they, that's not considered left wing or right wing. It's like you're going sports instead of going to the left wing or the right wing media. They're going into this like sports comedy thread media, which I think is great. Like uh, they're trying to really reach the barbershop, you know, channels of discussion at least, and that those are very male 
channels. Like they haven't mm-hmm. hit, I don't know what would be, uh, well, I mean, I guess like, you know, um, Danica Patrick, I would say like, I wouldn't be surprised if some, uh, some Congress people or Hancock or someone end up on, on her show or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe Oprah. Where's Oprah in this? Is she going to like, <laughs> like, get her, like Diane Sawyer? Is she still alive? When are, when is like some of the, uh, I don't know. Anyways. I mean, that's like, okay, that's another incredibly fascinating part of what's going on is the media blackout. If you just like look at the media blackout right now, what news channels have covered this? News Nation is going on four weeks of revealing the biggest piece of info, the biggest scandal in human history. UFOs are being hidden by the United States government. And it's not, and also the aliens and the relationship between humanity has been hidden by the U.S. government for, since at least 1933 and the Vatican is in on it. He's going four weeks without anyone touching that story except congressmen saying, yes, he seems right about everything. <laughs> He's got Rubio, Gallagher, and hearings are happening. They said mm-hmm. the hearings are going to happen and Grush is going to testify. This is going to be big. This is going to blow the mind. I mean, it was tough for me going back and talking to my family. This is going to be huge. Um, people don't know yet, though. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's four weeks, and the Washington Post has not really touched The New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, they have not touched it. But they're not going to be able to ignore hearings. They have to cover hearings. They have to come out. And that was actually one of the really interesting things Rubio said is, I, you know, behind the scenes for the last two years, or whenever Biden or whoever it was, the first president that took control of the CIA and then said, get me all of the darn databases, put it all together and start making a darn briefing narrative so we know a story that we can go public with. They have to have a story ready. And I think Grush was basically coming forward saying, all right, we've got a story between 1933 and now that we're willing to let out. It's going to hurt a few people. Catholic Church going to be really, really hurt. Maybe the United States government might get really, really hurt. But I think they're ready probably because it's this or World War III. And I think that's probably, they're like, it's time. And and enough people are dead that would have gotten really embarrassed by the horrible, evil things that they did. You know, maybe enough people who really were complicit in the murder of Kennedy are are dead and gone. So it's just their children who have to be like, I'm sorry. Yeah, my dad was a horrible, evil person. You know, so anyways, but it's for, I mean, these media companies that are still silent, it's embarrassing. And mm-hmm. it's like, who's controlling them? Who is sitting in and the reporters in there have to be like, uh, so, uh, so boss, who's telling you to not talk about this incredible story that possibly uncovers. See, I think they're all silent because the, I don't think it's hard to trace this story to, to Kennedy RFK and 1933 and the Nazis and Catholics. I think they just are like the threads are not hard to put together. I think the narrative just terrifies them. And they're all like talking together. Like, how are we going to present this? Like, are we going to just all come out and say the Pope is controlled by aliens? Is that what we're going to say? Or are we all going to claim, no, the Pope is good and it's the Jews that are controlled by aliens? I mean, I think they're deciding something like that or, I don't know. It's like, Something is happening behind the scenes, and it's not really clear who the players are. It, but it does seem clear the Pope and the Vatican are one of the players, and that's a big location that something could be hidden. And Antarctica is another player. Or something. And then mm-hmm. I'd say Area 51 and S4, those are definite locations that are worth a gander, gander. If bros like McAfee and Schultz want to, like, start a road show, I'd go. If they ever invite me, I'm an elected official. I could I could come on their podcast and talk about this stuff, or you could. Um, we could do a joint show with them. <laughs> that would be so much fun. Thanks. And Russell Brand is doing a good job covering this stuff too. He's like paying attention. Have you heard anything about when the House is planning to do the Congressional Committee? I can't find oh, anything on it. Florida, or some, they're doing it. Maybe there's a reason they're doing it in Florida. In Florida, what? I think that if there's a competition between the Senate and the House, who's going to go first? Or they're working on it. So Gillibrand's working on one, and and uh, what's his name, the congressman with the B, the Southern guy. Bernadette. Why would there be a congressional? Oh, I see it in Bing. Towards the end of July in Florida. Why not? It's because they're on vacation. They're just like 
plan. They, they're planning on being on vacation. And so they basically said, look, I'm looking, <laughs> but I just don't want to cancel my vacation. You know, there might be a compelling reason to do it. It's in Florida. That now it makes it really a presidential uh, race impact thing. Florida is a huge swing state in this. So maybe yeah. there's a benefit to having this story, this hearing at, happen as an event. In Florida, it, whether or not, I mean, who is it? Is it Gillibrand saying she wants to do it in Florida? It Maybe is the she, House Oversight Committee. Well, that's the, uh, uh, I don't know who's running that. Yeah, I think it could just be a fun political. I mean, this is the greatest story in history. So why not use it to affect the presidential election? This is, we're, <laughs> like, we're like 14 months from a presidential election. And the Maybe biggest story, Trump will show up. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine Tell Trump? Tell us what he knows. <laughs> I think Trump has to be just chomping at the bit to talk about aliens, except unless he knows the story reveals that he's backed by the same aliens that backed the Nazis. I'm pretty sure that's why he doesn't want all this to come out, because it's going to he's going to be like, uh, yeah. So it does seem the same group that did these atrocities are the same group sort of behind. I think he's just going to be like embarrassed by that. and It's going to be hard to hide from. It is James Comer, James Comer, the Republican chair of the House Oversight Committee yeah. that is in charge of setting up. That is crazy. That's what part of what is so fascinating that some of the some of the people involved in this are are very strong Republicans. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's I mean, can you just pre- we just got to pretend this is real. This is the most important there was basically a coup on the United States that looks like it started with Eisenhower. If Eisenhower mm-hmm. signed a treaty with aliens in 1955, you know, his granddaughter went on or his great granddaughter went on a podcast that said that Eisenhower considered that a surrender of the United States. They surrendered control of the United States to a, a group that knows knew about the aliens and it hid in the military industrial complex, basically in the CIA and the Air Force and in Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, or the, I believe are the two names. Um, and then, so Eisenhower, the U.S. was under control of a foreign, a non-visible government since then, at least. And then it might have involved, you know, Kennedy might have reclaimed the U.S. briefly for democracy and then was killed, swiped away from him. So then it, that might have been another change in power control. So which power are we under right now? At some point... I think the Kennedy, like, you know, uh, or at least the Kennedy has good guys. Like, I think the good guys, nicer guys, have control of the CIA at the moment. That's why there aren't a bunch of people getting killed. That's why Lou Elizondo and Christopher Mellon were not killed, because the CIA must no longer be able to easily kill. And also, everyone might have been waiting for Bob Lazar to get killed. Like, they were all like, mm-hmm. they look like Bob Lazar. Like, they're not going to kill him. Okay. Like, okay, Christopher Mellon, Lou Elizondo. It's like, okay. And then Grush. I mean, if you listen to Grush, he was afraid. And actually, one of the things Rubio was really helpful in saying, he went on and said, these people are afraid of their jobs. They're afraid of their clearances. And he then said they're afraid Mm -hmm. of harm. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, Rubio is really being impressive with his courage, you know, and Gallagher going on the Pat McAfee show is kind of a way of saying to Rubio, look, I'm also going to put my neck out there and talk about this. Rubio, in a hidden place in the Bahamas, wherever he's coming from, he went on the record saying the biggest confirmation news you could say is like, this is real and people are still afraid of getting hurt. That is sort of prepping us for how serious things that people have been hurt by this. And, and Gallagher going on McAfee, you know, and Gallagher is ex-Marine. This is a military guy going on there. He's saying, I, you know, this is mm-hmm. real. This is real. And so people have gotten hurt for this. We need to know that story. Once that story comes out, we're going to have a, it's a, going to be a much more serious conversation. Even if it's not as sexy as, you know, Kennedy was killed for it, which it probably was, but a number of lesser name, lesser known names, I think, are going to come out. I'm, I'm starting to feel not so like fun and way more serious. Like we're going to learn U.S. has changed hands violently and maybe is still there's a little bit of that going on behind the scenes. And other countries, this could be has to happen in other countries. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, back when Lou Elizondo uh, stuff came out, uh, what was the name of the, I believe it was this, this, the House Majority Leader, Harry Reid, 
Yeah, um, Harry Reid was big on pushing for this. Yeah, he did. He did a documentary called The Phenomenon. I have not seen it, um, but I'm going to see it now after I, uh, be thinking great about thing. this more. Like, I, I would love to to see what he had to say. Uh, yeah, about this, you know, and and the thing that just blows me away is like, so you're getting major people that are credible that were just blown off, right? And um, the guy who interviewed uh, Grush on News Nation, what is his name? It's like Col- Col- Colhart. 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 Yeah. Right. I saw a little clip of him yesterday saying that he has several other people who want to come forward, but they want to see how Grush is treated in the congressional meeting first. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, four weeks, and now they're still waiting to see what is the darn Washark Times, CNN. They have not mentioned his name. Actually, did I, did I show you? I, uh, the Washington Times finally put an article out. They took him three weeks. The first sentence of the Washington Times article was this. So there's this guy named David Grush. It was like, that was literally the first line. They were like, we have to talk about this. <laughs> ah, ah, like that, oh, that's please. the thing. Is there's definitely, there's just too much. There, there's too much pile up and evidence going on. And the thing that is so shocking is that it's both sides, Republicans and Democrats have people. So this is not a prison issue. There's, you know, there, whoever is secretly controlling this information is not of one single party, right? Because that party would be protecting them. Well, whoever right? group is controlling the information probably over the years has attempted to wield control over every information channel mm-hmm. that works, including the Democratic and Republican Party. It probably would even invest in smaller parties that prop up. It might even invest in creating smaller political parties that it could easily start the control of. It could, that could be a great strategy. It could be everywhere. It's really a weird time of we need to ask, who do we trust? And that's why I, Matt Reddy, went on Twitter and declared myself not under alien control. I'm an elected official. I'm happy to serve as a leader and I invite all my co-leaders other elected officials, just say you're not under alien control publicly, just so that we hear you say that and just be on. And I'm happy to take a lie detector test. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking of creating a web page for any leader to go to where you can declare yourself not of alien control. And we'll also ask you if you agree we should show Antarctica to everyone and we should show Area 51 and talk about reptilians and invite all aliens and reptilians to come party in Fort Townsend. And uh, we'll discuss telepathy. We'll build little radio communication telepathy devices. And we'll have a reality show. We'll have a new Bitcoin or a new currency. We'll launch our own currency called Alien Human Coin Transformer (laughs) AI Party (laughs) Dance Meditation Coin. And uh, Beyond Humanity Blockchain. We'll create this and we'll use this to basically help humanity. So, But the first step. You gotta say you're not under alien control. Margaret, are you under alien control? I am control? not under alien control. I think you need to say your full name, you know, when you say that to, to it counts. Okay, I, Margaret Howe, am not under alien control. I'm Matt Ready, I'm not under alien control. So that should be our sign off. Every, yeah. t- cause you have to then, you have to like do it, like, uh. <laughs> so yeah, okay. That, that's so, a those great... are oh, 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 another guy though did say, because I said, I'm, since I'm also the only leader that's declared themselves not under alien control, I'm technically the only human leader, like, on <laughs> Earth. So I'm, I'm currently, I believe, the only leader at all on Earth. And But another guy did come forward on Twitter and say, Matt, I declared myself leader of the Galactic Federation months ago. And I said, I responded to him, I recognize your claim as reasonable and that we have to stick together, those of us that are not under alien control. <laughs> so I invite others, part two of us. Um, I'm easy to find, but hopefully everyone is, you know, peaceful who comes to Fort Townsend. And, uh, yeah, and I have some ideas of where we could have a capital for Earth and humans. I think Fort Townsend would be a great base. Uh, do you have an idea, Margaret? Well, it, has, it has water access. Yeah. Ships could get there. It would be a great port. <laughs> but, I mean, I would like to the world. I'd suggest that Fort Townsend would be one of our capitals. Uh, do you – what do you think, Margaret? I that, that would be a great location for it. Strategic between the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> okay, 
Can we <laughs> consider that a decision then? I guess yeah. my motion that we consider that a decision then. Making yeah. a process. That's how I we do second it. that. <laughs> All right. Well, it is unless I hear an objection. No one joined our Twitter space. Port Townsend <laughs> is now the capital of our uh, of Earth and humanity. All are welcome. It's a sanctuary location, and I'd like to claim that the boundaries extend from the uh, shore out 1,000 miles each direction. Thank you. What is the actual claim for the U.S. for the the distance out? Is it a thousand uh, miles? It's like a hundred miles. I just, you know, I said I might as well take a thousand miles every direction. That would give yeah. me a good portion. That would, I, I think, that might give me uh, the North Pole. Do I get the North Pole if I take a thousand miles? No. Oh, how about I take? Uh, no. I change that to I take a hundred thousand miles each direction. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hundred thousand miles in every direction. You get the whole Earth that way for sure. How Actually, far is it to the from, moon? <laughs> from 3D space. Oh, let's take it. Yeah, let's take it from Port Townsend in 3D space out. Let's just say a billion miles in every direction. Okay, I'm leader of all humans within a billion miles out every direction from. That's. I feel good about that. I feel that's a reasonable number. If we're living in a simulation filled with aliens that have been hiding like little wimps, that's we we deserve a billion miles in every direction. So the Miz, uh, two hundred and thirty eight thousand miles from Earth. How far is this? One hundred and fifty two million. So a billion would cover our solar system, huh? All right. Do we get any? I think we get other stars. Actually, do we get any other stars within a billion miles? I don't know. How many stars? I bet we get a few. Oh, Bing. A billion miles. Are there any stars within a billion miles? Uh, Alpha Centauri is the closest one, and it is 20 trillion miles. Oh, uh, so no. So, okay, I'm, I'm being very fair. I only claimed one star system. <laughs> and really, literally, if one just would like declare themselves also not an alien that is in elected government, you would probably outrank me, you yeah. know, and I would defer to people happily. I'm probably the lowest ranking member of the elected, you know, human alliance. You know, I'm like Rimmer on Red Dwarf, the lowest ranking member of a hierarchy. <sighs> Anyways, and this other guy is a good, he sounds like a good leader, too, so I'm happy to defer to him. He should pick a capital, I think, or they should pick a capital. They should pick a capital for their for their problem. Like a role in the human government, Margaret? Yeah. <laughs> no, I will, I will stay out of the government, but all right, well, you're I'll, out I'll of be a civilian contractor. <laughs> well, all right, all right. You're either with us or against us, yeah. along with the events. <laughs> Um, well, I hope we can have a treaty. I would like, would you like to join me for a summit in Antarctica? That would be fun. Are that you, would be fun. Uh, you know, you can actually see the pyramid in Google Maps in Antarctica. You should, yeah. you should look at the pyramid. If you just I've look at Antarctica it, but, pyramid, uh, Google Maps will show it to you. Um, yeah, I think the so, truth is in Antarctica. It's pretty cool. Um, and like people are critical going, well, you know, one line of it isn't a straight line. Like, yeah, but this is millions of years old, so. <laughs> if there's aliens, they have to have a mothership somewhere. And, you know, a mothership either is movable or it's embedded in a planet. And if it's embedded somewhere, it has to have been there a very, very long time, well hidden. And 90 million years under seven miles of ice is really a great place to hide something. That's a well, great we can detect so little within our own solar system. We're not looking. We're not keen for things in our solar system. You know, we, we're looking at, you know, oh, we're going to study Venus or we're going to study, you know, right. But like something could come in here and it would be very hard for us to detect. Um, we have no like major system to detect that. We, we don't even have a major system to detect asteroids really. That's. <laughs> We, we have a long ways to go yep. in that. So, yeah, there could totally be a mothership behind the planet, and we would have no clue. We'd be completely clueless. Oh, right? no, I think it's been proven. We might – we could be fooled about so much mm -hmm. right now. We do not know what's going on. And so I have to, like, keep on going back and just, like, thinking about history over and over again. Well, we need to get out there. We need to get – you know, stations and humans traveling in our solar system. 
Um, we need to, as a species, we need to get off this rock and yeah. and see what's around us, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> All right. Well, do you want to wrap? I can. I have yeah, a, I'm, I'm getting half to wrap here, sadly. Um, okay. Yeah. I am ready with the you, uh I keep on saying I have to share my screen though if I want to have the audio ready. So let me share. Okay, share your screen. You uh I'll like start the music and then you can start the wrap up. Or, okay. Or and, oh, I'm gonna find a good spot for the music though. So our, our call to action is is to follow you on Twitter. Is that our call to action? Uh, uh I think everyone should. Think about Antarctica. Okay. I think that should be our call to action. In fact, we should okay. think about finding the truth about Antarctica. Uh, maybe just go there. I don't know. Uh, okay. Or what would be a better call to action? That's a great call to action. Okay. Yeah. Homework. Right. Till next time. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to start at a random place in the middle. No, I'm going to go here. All right. Ready? I'm going to play. Believe it's coming back soon. Actually, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. There we go. That's a good spot. Um, yeah, I guess that's not the way I normally do it, is it? It's you just sort of, you yeah, say you're I'll, right. I'll do it, and then you can play the music. Okay, sorry, I had that all wrong in my brain. All right, I'm ready. Right. Okay, our call to action today is to study Antarctica, uh, see what you find there. And uh, also follow Meditation Matt on Twitter for an eclectic mix of philosophy, art, and activism, and ufology. Thank you for taking the time to be part of the Beyond Humanity podcast today. And join us next time on July 6th. Don't be afraid of the truth. And I, Margaret Howe, am not under the influence of aliens. Woo-hoo. And I'm Matt Reddy, and I'm not under the control of aliens either. Excellent. Or elected was we trust He cried a hands he swells Do you know what he does? Resterà nel primo
stato Ho oh, finalmente verrà rivelata Dietro il denaro si nasconde Dandosi il turno ogni giorno La verità sta scappando di mano E non credo tornerà a breve Non c'è segreto nel congresso O nei fidati eletti E nelle mani dei privati Lo sai Wally John Senti che ti guardano dall'ombra del passato, l'influenza sta prendendo e nell'ora più buia le luci vanno via, ricordati chi sei, a testa alta sta. Wally John.